I've decided to send my forks off to Paula Evo Industries in Oregon to get them revalved new springs put in. So I'm gonna go through the steps of getting the forks removed, how to ship them. I'll get these forks reinstalled. We'll do some testing and see what the outcome is. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. Uh, I want to start off by saying thanks to all of you that left comments on what you'd like to see or what your recommendations are regarding what I should do with the forks on the upgrade. Now, some of the less expensive upgrades like the Andriani and even the Olin's, which isn't quite as, as uh, inexpensive, the reviews on those have been pretty mixed. So even though it is in the budget area, because the reviews coming back were not good, I really decided that I didn't want to go in that direction and spend eight, $900 on a fork cartridge that uh, may not perform the way I wanted to. So I ended up contacting Paul at Evo Industries out of Oregon because of the comments that was left below saying um, that Paul knows these forks very, very well, knows what the problem is, knows how to fix it, and can get better performance out of the fork cartridges. So I called him, I talked to him, it sounded like the perfect thing to do. It's going to cost about $600 to get new shims put in and to get the, the shim pack installed properly. And then he has a new valve that he puts in the fork cartridges. So that's the overall cost. I think shipping, and I'll find out at the end, is gonna be about $50 each way. So in total, it'll be about $700. The other thing that he's gonna do for me is he has his own uh, proprietarily designed springs to go in here because apparently the spring in these forks has a taper on it and it's really hard to find a replacement spring. So I am getting a set of springs that is set for my weight. Now, I don't remember exactly what we talked about the uh, uh, rate. I think it was uh, 0.65 kilograms um, per millimeter. So really what I need to do is I need to get these pulled and what I'm gonna do is put them in a rifle box and get those shipped out and I'll go through all that. So stick around, we'll go through the process and then once these are back in, I will show you exactly how they feel or what my experience is in getting these four cartridges uh, up and running properly, built properly and functioning as they're supposed to. All right, first thing I gotta do is get the bike lifted. I have this scissor lift that I've been using for a really long time and I built this little apparatus here to stabilize these scissor lifts and also give me a strapping point that I can strap both sides of the crash bars on to keep the bike from uh, tipping off of the scissor lift in either direction. So I'll tighten the other side up. But if you're curious about this, this thing that I did here, I'll leave a, a link to the video in the description below. It's been, um, a pretty popular video because it adds some safety and security. And I know some other people have uh, modified what I've done so uh, they could, you know, make it work for them and to get a little bit safe, safer lift. So I just wanted to mention that real quick. All right, next I'm gonna remove the front wheel. If you don't know how to remove your front wheel, then the rest of this project may not be for you, but um, it's pretty simple, a couple, uh, couple bolts and uh, the axle, pull the axle and, and it'll come right out. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove each of the calipers. I don't like dangling calipers. I don't like them hanging from the cable. So I'm gonna suspend these with uh, some bungees or something, uh, maybe some zip ties just to keep them from just hanging on their own weight and keep them tucked away. So yeah, this is probably gonna be <laughs> a little tight because I haven't taken these off before. So we got the first one. And that is a 13 uh, millimeter socket for these uh, caliper bolts. All right, caliper is dangling right here while I'm waiting to get the plastics off. There's the ABS sensor tucked under here that I need to get the plastic removed. And once I get that removed, then I can get the sensor uh, pulled out. All right, tucked in here, right there is the ABS sensor. That is a size three millimeter. So there's two bolts holding that in. The, uh, these are just Allen heads. Oh, that's not gonna fit. So I gotta figure that out. And it is a size four 
for all four on this side, four on that side, and then the plastics, plastics will come off. Now, what I like to do is instead of trying to wrestle the plastics out of it, I just usually slide the fork tube out of one side and then slide it out of the other and kind of leave this tucked in here. And then I'm not having to pull all this other stuff off. That's, that's what I'm gonna try to do um, just to keep everything connected and we'll see how that turns out. All right, I've got my rifle case here. And um, Paul actually asked me to point this out is the most important thing to protect on these forks are the lugs. Is if these get damaged, then they have to do a lug replacement. And it might be really, really hard to get these parts if that were to happen. So what I'm gonna do when I pack them in the box is I'm gonna set the lug side opposite of the other forks. So they're gonna be at the end so they can't, for any particular chance, bang into each other. And then I'm also going to uh, wrap these in plastic wrap or some bubble wrap just to add a little additional protection. I don't know if that's necessary since it is in a foam box, but that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna get these wrapped up real quick and I will show you what it looks like before I buckle it up. All right, this next step is incredibly important. If you do this wrong, you're, you may end up being very frustrated when you get to the shipping company. Do not seal this up yet. Do not tape it up, do not lock it up. Because if you're walking into, say like a UPS store where I'm going and they see a rifle case, you're gonna need to show them what's in it and as soon as you show them the forks should be fine. We'll find out. But if you seal it up, you're gonna end up having to unseal it to prove to them that you're not trying to sh ship a rifle. So just keep that in mind, right? These cases are great for shipping the forks. Don't seal it up until you get to the UPS store and you can show them it's not a rifle. Okay, I already have one of the fork legs installed. I was just, I got overly excited as soon as I got them in, so I just, I threw it in. Now, one of the things that I'm doing is I really like these uh, neoprene socks that you can put over where your, your dust uh, seal and, of course, protecting the uh, oil seal as well inside there. So I just got these off Tusk for like 12 bucks. It's a, it's a neoprene sock that goes on. So I'm going to put that on and slide it down. And that hopefully should help keep some of that dust getting up into the dust seal. And then the dust seal will have a chance of doing a better job. Um, I've seen a lot of guys use this with good success. And since I've had these on my forks, um, knock on wood uh, or touch wood, I have not had any uh, fork seals go. But... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do this. So it's uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt because this the maximum size for this particular um, sleeve is 43 millimeter. And so this is at the max. So it takes a bit of stretching to get it on. Got that on there. Just work that down. And just give it a twist as it gets over. And then... Straighten that out. Now, I don't know if you can see how well you'll be able to see that, but um, I leave, I don't know, three quarters of an inch, inch above, and then this will float up and down and keep the stanchion clean before it goes up into the fork. That's the hope anyway. I have the forks finally installed. I've had a chance to test them. And just as a recap, what I had done is I had the shims replaced and uh, the shim stack and, and a bushing in there put together properly, assembled properly because from the factory it was wrong. So that's done. I've got heavier springs in here that match my weight. And then the base valve was also replaced. So I think with all of that, because shipping from, um, from me to Paul at Evo Industries was a bit expensive. I think I'm a little over, around $800 um, for the complete uh, rebuild here. Now, if you go to try to find a fork cartridge, you're gonna be spending that, if not more, and if you're not gonna insert it yourself, um, it's gonna cost you several hundred dollars in labor to get that done. So I think, for me, the cost was uh, appropriate. Now, performance-wise, my goodness, what a huge difference. Um, I was happy with the way the forks felt before, but um, I had to have the preload cranked all the way down and they didn't stay as high in the travel. And I found a whoop section out here on some forest roads and I could pound through those. Now I'm sure some of you out there are thinking you could go much faster, maybe wheelie through it, but it's not the way I ride. And um, because of the way the shock is performing, it's kicking a little. Uh, I, I just wanted to see what it would do and how, how well that front end would hold. And um, it stayed really high in the travel and was able to take every hit. And 
really felt like if I wanted to, I could accelerate through that and I could, um, with a better shock, just really blast that stuff. So I am incredibly impressed and happy with how the fork turned out. Now I will leave, uh, links in the description. If you want to get a hold of someone at Evo Industries, your closest shop can basically do the same thing Paul has done. Um, Paul, Paul seems to know the forks better than, than I think everybody else, but I think they're getting caught up to speed and he can give some instructions. It may save you and some shipping and these guys, they work on forks all the time. They, they know what to do. So, um, initially I was reluctant to send the forks in, um, you know, just separating them. It takes time to get back. Uh, but I'm glad I did it that way. So if you have an Aprilia Touareg 660, um, I really recommend you get your forks rebuilt, you know, if it, nothing else from that assembly issue. Um, and I, I want to mention, Paul did send me the shims back and I took a look at them. My shims weren't cracked, but you could tell they were, they were deformed. So they were still semi-functioning, but they had kind of molded to um, the, the bushing and uh, the base there. So... I've seen worse, uh, I've seen shims come out in worse condition. These weren't the worst that I've seen. That's with 13,000 miles, probably 8,000, 8, 9,000 of that was road miles. And the other four was, was BDR miles. So, um, they were doing okay, but this is much, much better, especially if you are a heavier person, uh, the getting, getting the springs, getting new springs for your weight really makes a difference. Uh, it, um, reduces the brake dive and then yeah it, it'll just respond a lot better so real quick settings wise um, i set everything at the midpoint on rebound and compression to see how it felt i've turned the compression in one click and i've opened up the rebound one click and that feels pretty good to me if i can just get the the shock to match the forks better then i might be able to get it dialed in even better so Anyway, um, if you are looking to try to do something with your forks, hopefully you found this useful. I know it's a bit of a ramble, um, kind of excited the way things turned out. If you have any questions, leave that in the comments below. If you have this bike and you've done anything with your forks, um, let me know in the comments below what you did, whether it was just getting them revalved, sent them to a suspension shop, or if you did it yourself. And if you've changed the springs, what spring rates, and the last thing is if you went to a cartridge, let me know what cartridge you put in. Anyway, if you made it stuck around to the end, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, remember, you can always make more money, but you cannot make more time. So get out and do that ride that you're thinking about. Get out, do some riding, ride safe, and I will see you out there.